Joining me now is Jordan Klepper. He's a contributor for The Daily Show, and I'm so excited to welcome him back to the show. So I have been wondering what the thought bubble was going on in your head when you were watching that Katie Bit Brit response. There's a lot to unpack there, but what did you make of it? Well, it was it was definitely my least favorite Tennessee Williams play, but I was glad to see it <laughs> resurfacing again. Um, I, I think, frankly, performative outrage is a skill, and it's something that you saw her take her first swing at, which is always an exciting time for a performer. Uh, as a failed actor myself, I know what it's like to be handed a, a shaky script and not have the skills to to really communicate with my audience, and I, I, I felt a certain kinship with the senator there. Uh, but she gave it her best. She knew who she was playing to in an oddly sexual way more often than not. It felt like she was coming on to the moderate GOP moms of America with stories of human trafficking. But, hey, if that's the game plan, good luck. Uh, she did tell a horrific story, as you mentioned, involving a migrant and human trafficking. She strongly implied it happened in the United States on Joe Biden's watch. It actually happened in Mexico when George W. Bush was president. So let's just listen to what she said on Thursday night and how she tried to clean it up this morning. We wouldn't be okay with this happening in a third world country. This is the United States of America. And it is past time, in my opinion, that we start acting like it. President Biden's border policies are a disgrace. Did you mean to give the impression that this horrible story happened on President Biden's watch? No, Shannon. Look, I very specifically said this is what President Biden did during his first 100 days. Minutes after coming into office, he stopped all deportations. So, look, I mean, it's a horrible story, um, but she clearly got herself into a bit of a pickle there. I mean, do you, do you feel watching that she cleared things up for everyone? And what do you think? I mean, because you spent, have spent a lot of time with MAGA voters at rallies. How do you think they digested her performance and even her cleanup this morning? Well, I don't think a lot of people pay attention to the cleanup. It's, mm. it's one thing to go on Fox News on Sunday morning, but a lot of the people I talk to at MAGA events have only seen the out-of-context clip they put online. And so, yeah, I think she got the headlines she needed. She spoke with fear. She spoke with outrage. She had the headlines. I think those got digested into the MAGA sphere. Um, this follow-up, uh, what happened this morning, I think it's compelling. I'm, I'm happy to see media pushing back on that narrative. But yet again, that's not how people digest the narrative. They digest the initial tidbit and they move on. So I think probably from her perspective, in many ways, mission accomplished. Crazy to say, but, but you talked to a lot of these voters. Now, before Super Tuesday, you ventured to a Nikki Haley rally in North Carolina. And I want to play a little piece of you talking to a Haley voter about why she'd still support Donald Trump in a general election, just to give everyone a taste of what you witnessed there. Why can't you be done with Donald Trump? He's, it's just, mm, and the sex cases and all the, I mean, come on, just the fact that you have all the criminal stuff. It's insane. It is insane. No one should support him for president. No. Yes. But, yeah. But if it's him versus Biden, you will support him for president. I think so, yeah. Oh, come on. You were all of us in that moment. So, I mean, look, you, you talked to a lot of these voters. I mean, what is your biggest takeaway from uh, all those conversations you had with these Haley voters? They're horrified by Trump, but a lot of them would still vote for him from the ones you talked to. We were really curious about that question of where this group of voters goes. I think the big takeaway is I think the Biden team needs to be worried about this. Um, these folks were didn't need to be explained to about uh, the dangers of Donald Trump. They articulated it better than a lot of the folks on the left that I've talked to would articulate their fears and their anxieties. But also, Joe Biden is dead in the water in their minds. Uh, he needs to articulate a vision to get them back on that page. I, I, I expect there to be much more, um, much more <laughs> openness to the idea of accepting somebody outside of their original party. But when we pressed, a lot of people said they wouldn't vote, but most people went back to knowing they don't want to support a Donald Trump presidency. 
but not being able to allow themselves to support the idea of Joe Biden as president. So we walked away feeling like Joe Biden needs to start communicating to these voters uh, or, or find a, a whole new option, because the Joe Biden in their mind is one with which uh, they will not support. Hard to watch. OK, before I let you go real fast, everybody wants to know, how much John Stewart talk of Katie Britt is there going to be tomorrow night? What should we expect? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm always excited to go into the morning meetings uh, where we get to digest the news of the day or the weekend. And so that's what I have the best job in the world, where we all get to sit around a table. We would get to watch the, the chaos around us and, and, and make lots of lovely, insightful, thoughtful jokes and or uh, cries to the gods about the things that we saw. So uh, I, 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 definitely, I definitely assume there'll be a little bit of a Senator Britt talk tomorrow on The Daily Show. I bet. Lots to work with last week. We'll all be tuning in, of course. Jordan Klepper, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And I love all the stuff you do out there. It's so interesting.